Hey guys, Fletcher here with Lost in the Wilderness. I'm crouching down in the woods right now losing my balance because of this tree behind me. Today we are talking about batoning with a knife, the way that I find to be the safest and least prone to injury because no one likes getting hurt while they're out there in the wilderness and uh, talking about how to get some good dry wood. All right, today we're talking batoning. So what are you gonna need to baton your firewood? First, you're gonna need the actual baton itself. This is the safest way to do it, so we're not gonna use our hand as the baton. We're actually gonna use the piece of wood as our baton. You're going to need a piece of wood. This was just a piece of wood I ripped off a dead tree and it helped because it's a little wet and this is going to prove why we're doing this. And you're gonna need, obviously, your knife because this is knife batoning. Knife batoning. Uh, knife batoning. Yeah, knife batoning. So, what are you going to need to do to knife baton? Uh, not fancy flip tricks. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the beefiest part of your knife, and that's what you're going to go perpendicular to your uh, specimen. We'll call it a specimen. We'll speak scientifically here. And then you're going to take your baton, and you're going to go out past here, so you want to go past the wood. So anywhere past here is really good. It's a really good strike zone. In fact, if it's thinner wood, you're going to want to try to stay more towards here, just so it, it's not dispersing it over, you know, this wide open area. It's better if you go in here. So you're going to get a firm grip on your knife, firm grip on your baton, and then once you get to about here. Um, where the wood is splitting. Now, because I ripped this off a tree, you have this part. Uh, you're just going to give your knife a bit of a turn, and it's going to pop off, and then you're going to grab it with your foot. And there you go. There is your batoned piece of wood. And this method allows you to do it a safe way so you won't damage your hand, and you get a nice dry bit of wood for your fire. So after you get your tinder going, after you get some smaller twigs on there, well, this is the next step, especially if you're doing a log cabin fire, or as they call it. I thought there was another name for a second in my head there wasn't. These are some specimens I did earlier. Now you can create a log cabin fire that allows air to go in there, but overhead wind can't really get in there, and allows you to fire up your fire all nice. And that's all done through batoning. And this has been Toodlebit Tuesday with Fletcher Daniel.